Hey guys, Ray from Love Your RV. So in this video, I'm going to be reviewing a battery from a company called Bouge RV. Now I've reviewed uh, several of their products in the past, and they've uh, proved to to work well. Uh, I've did a portable fridge freezer, used it for about a year or so, and it worked well. And I'm currently I have their solar panels, two of them on my roof. They've been up there a couple years, and also. Um, picture it here is a charge controller that I've been using also for at least a year and a half. So I thought I'd give their battery a try because it looked like a, a pretty good uh, deal for, for what it's got. Um, case looks pretty cool actually. It's a little different than a lot of them. But one big feature it has that may be of interest to people is it has it's a self-heating battery. So if you're in cold weather, it will uh, has heating pads inside that uh, if you try to charge it uh, below freezing it'll it'll warm up the battery before it starts charging uh, just take a quick look at the tech specs here too also found this pretty pretty interesting is uh, you have max parallel packs of 400 amps you can put four in parallel but you can also put four in series so that kind of uh, checks off most of the boxes here as far as a good uh, quality lithium, lithium battery. And it also has IP65 uh, protection, waterproof protection. You can't submerge, submerge it, but uh, any kind of splash or spray is fine. So I think I'll put it through uh, a bunch of tests here and uh, we'll see if it lives up to its specs. It's supposed to charge um, at up to 100 amps and discharge up to 100 amps. And they say it's a 100 amp hour in capacity. So we'll do all those tests. And then uh, I'll see if I can get it apart and we can have a peek inside and, and see what kind of uh, components are used to build it and see the build quality. So let's get to it. So here she is. It's quite an attractive looking battery. They've done a good job with their branding and everything. Also lots of information on top, specs and whatnot, warnings. So size-wise, it's just close to 11 and a half long and just under eight and a half wide. And height is just under eight inches, so not overly big. It's got a nice manual. I looked through, they did a good job with that. And also a nice touch, they included a, a charging cable for plugging into a kind of a, some type of a lighter socket or something. Fairly good uh, terminals there and little caps. And I like how they have these slots. They have four slots so you can do different tie downs. And also at the bottom they have screws on each corner. So you can screw down the battery. Good touch. And then for lifting the battery on each side they have nice handholds. So pretty good case design in my opinion. So yeah, if a person just wanted to use this for camping or something and just wanted to be able to charge stuff through, you know, an automotive type 12 volt socket, comes with a nice uh, set of leads and even even fused, came with a 20 amp in there and in the bag is a couple 15s and another 20. So just a nice touch. I also noticed right on the battery they have the support email website phone number and a WhatsApp number. So first test I'm gonna do is test the self-heating function of the battery. So I've got a portable freezer here. I put the battery in there for about 24 hours on its lowest setting. So right now it's sitting at about uh, zero degrees Fahrenheit, minus 18 Celsius thereabouts. So we'll pull the battery out and we'll hook on a charger and supposedly what's supposed to happen is there's heating pads in the battery that will activate and should draw, they say the estimate about 60 watts and that'll run until the, the temperature comes up in the battery. I think it's around something around 45 uh, Fahrenheit and at that point it will start charging. So let's pull the battery out. Okay, turn on the charger here. And what do we got? It's like about 6.3 amps. 
So actually slightly more than uh, 60 watts. Anyway, it fired right up and started uh, warming the battery with those internal heaters. So we'll just let that go and see if it comes back and then starts charging the battery. This is a 20 amp charger, so once it's uh, warmed up enough to start charging, that should switch to 20 amps. Well, I threw a voltage meter on there, so 14.5, that's what this charger's putting out at 6 amps, so that's around 87 watts. Okay, took about a half an hour, but now you can see we're up to 19 amps of charge there so now it's actually charging the battery and not just running heaters or anything so the heaters have turned off and this thing's putting out uh, charging amps so works av as advertised now this came as like a solid deep freeze block so in normal use what would happen is you'd be out somewhere and, and it would get really cold and once your battery dropped below freezing level you know around 32 Fahrenheit um, then it would kick on the heaters and bring it back up. So this is just kind of an extreme example test and it worked pretty well. Next test is the charging. I'm going to see if it can handle up to 100 amps as advertised. So I've got a couple converter chargers there. We'll just record the app here to tell me the current. Okay. Plug them in one by one. Plug this one in here. There we go. Charging 54.9 amps. Now we'll fire on the next one. 109, 108, 107, 106, 105. It's handling it no problem there. So 101 amps seems to be handling no, no problem. We'll let her go a little bit. Yeah, no signs of shutdown. We're sitting right at 100.3 amps. Cool. So what I'll do is I'm not going to charge it up at, uh, you could charge it for fast charging at 100 amps, but the recommended is 50 amps. So I'm going to take one of these off and then we'll charger up to full charge and then do a capacity test see how much uh, see how much it can put out it's supposed to put out a hundred amp hours next i wanted to test that it can handle its rated max discharge rate of a hundred amps so i've set up this uh, power station i can uh, change its input wattage for as far as charging so it's just convenient to to get it at a, a rate and uh, right now it's putting out 104 amps on my meter here. So it looks like it can do the trick. I'm letting it go for about five minutes now and it hasn't had any problems. So give it a pass for its max uh, discharge rate of 100 amps. Now I'm going to use this little lithium charger to charge the battery up to 100%. This lithium charger has an LED that turns green when the battery is fully charged. And then we'll try a capacity test. So I'll use sort of a slower um, discharge rate and we'll see if we can get the rated 100 amp hours out of this battery. Okay, little charger LED turned green. And so we're fully charged. Showing 14.7. So yeah, fully charged here. Turn off the charger. And she dropped back 13.47. So we're going to go and uh, use this box here. And I'm going to use this inverter to charge this box. And then I can uh, set up how much amperage I want going into this. So There we go. 17.3 amps. 
That should be a good rate of charge to use. Well, we'll come back in uh, several hours and see how we're doing. Okay, we're getting down to the bitter end here. Less than uh, two amp hours remaining to go, so just record this for you so you can see what happens at the end. There we go. Just went past 100 amp hours. So the, this the battery monitor measures amp hours or amps going through this shunt here and it just passed the 100. And actually the battery is still sitting at uh, 12 volts. Still putting out 18.5, uh, 18.7 18 amps, 220 something watts. So it actually has a bit more than its rated capacity. We'll just let that go and see how far it goes. Okay, we're at 101.6. can tell by the inverter voltage, though. It's, the inverter is just about to pack it in. So I'll call that. Looks like I get about maybe 102 at that amperage rate. You could probably lower that and it might eke out a bit more. But it does prove that the, the battery is properly rated at 100 amp hours. Okay, I managed to get the lid off. I had to take off some plastic. A few tools of power persuasion, buck knife, hive tool, a little mini sledgehammer. I was able to kind of get along there where the glue is so that the cover pops off here. Didn't damage anything really. Let's see, there's a couple wires connecting negative and positive. And we've got a pretty decent looking BMS. It's got quite a, a large heat sink sitting on top. And it looks like they're using a metal metal case design, which is kind of nice. And we got our connections here. Looks like we have sensor wires over here. Those look like the pickups for the temperature sensors. And then we have, this looks like our two wires that go for uh, the heating pads. And then for... Uh, the BMS for the, the cells doesn't look too bad at all. You know, I'll try, there's some screws down here. I'll try to get this block right out and we'll get a closer look at it. Okay, so here's a closer look at it. Just taking this fiber board off the end here and undid the, the leads from the BMS. I don't like that all the leads are covered with this kind of heat shielded stuff it's nice but one thing I don't like is the look of these screws on here and some brass looks like brass screws in there and you can see one is stripped the other one's kind of stripped it's kind of weird arrangement it looks like maybe this was at some point laser welded and then they changed it and went with screws or something can't really see any uh, indication on the cells of a maker. I like that it's got the, the fiber board in there and nice metal case all around. That's a step up from a lot of the cheap ones that are just kind of taped together and plastic wrapped. You can see here there's the, the heating. Looks like there's two heating pads in there that go right in between the cells. <laughs> Let's take a look at the other end. Not much on the other end. Just have four temperature sensors here, one for each cell, which is kind of nice. I don't really see much indication of what this BMS is. I'll pop it off and see if there's anything on the back. Nope, not much on the other side. It's sort of a number over here and a barcode. And I also see a barcode down here. It says cells. Anyway, I like that it sits, gets screwed on top of this uh, metal bit. 
So my impression overall is the build quality is pretty decent given that it's a kind of a lower end price for a self-heating uh, battery. The only negatives I kind of say is you know those cells didn't look they look like they had been kind of attached and then reattached again. It leads me to believe that maybe they sent me out a refurbished battery which might make some sense being a reviewer maybe they thought Okay, well, let's just get one of our batteries and refurbish it and send it out, save a bit of money versus sending out a brand new one. And I really would like it to be able to come apart a lot easier. Like, I know they seal it up for the weatherproofing, but, <clears throat> you know, they could get a different lid and an O-ring and all that and make it so you could open it and service it. Because you never know, you could get a bad connection somewhere. And uh, then you'd be stuck trying to get it open. I was actually pretty successful in getting it open. But, uh, you know, your mileage may vary. You may end up damaging it, taking it apart, or have to send it back to the company. Is the company going to be there in 10 years? This battery still should be working in 10 years, given that it's 4,000 uh, cycle rating. Anyway, not too bad of a construction, I think. Let's just finish off with a summary of my likes and dislikes. I like that you can series or parallel four batteries. Um, you get the 100 amp charge and discharge rate. Uh, nice case design, looks nice, uh, IP65 waterproof. It's got a five year warranty and it's rated at 4,000 cycles down to 80% capacity left, which is pretty high. Uh, Self heating with those uh, 60 watt uh, heating pads in there. Pretty good price, $679.99 currently, and this company always has sales. They always have like 15% off or whatever, so you can always get some little bit extra off. Uh, full protections, you got high and low temperature and voltage and current and short circuit. Uh, came with that nice DC auto cable. Uh, decent manual, has support numbers. Uh, so, And also the inside looks pretty good. Hardware looks pretty good couple dislikes i don't like the case is sealed you can't get in and service it i would like it to be able to become apart a little easier like you can seal it for weatherproof with an o-ring and, and let you, let a person open it um, and there's also no bluetooth app i think that would be pretty easy for them to add so it'd be nice to build a you know a lot of the batteries come now with the bluetooth app so you know what kind of capacity you have left in the voltage and wattage that sort of thing anyway that's it for now uh, any questions just leave them in the comments below Till next time, Ray from Love Your RV. Cheers, everyone.